let's have a look at question 18 in this video so we want to work exactly 12 hours per week now we can do this by working as a clerk for six dollars an hour or by tutoring some students now we are indifferent between these two jobs so we have three students that demand tutoring we have three students with an individual demand given by this function now if we have the option of setting a two-part tariff for tutoring how many hours should we tutor how many hours should we work as a clerk and what would be the price for our tutoring if we decide to tutor okay so let's start we have two options here we have working as a clerk so we have quantity of our working as a clerk plus quantity of hours working as a tutor and in total we must have 12 hours now what we would like to have is a function of QC depending on QT and why do we do that it's because later on we're gonna substitute everything in terms of one variable and we're gonna maximize with respect to one variable because here we want to optimize our working time so for that we're gonna use derivatives okay let's zoom out to get some more space and keep going now what do we know we know that we have money by working so we have total revenues total income let's call it total revenues total revenues by working as a clerk that's the price we get per hour times the quantity that we are working so we get six dollars an hour working as a clerk that's from here times the quantity is 12 minus QT so if you open the brackets that's 72 minus 6 times QT and that's one part of the question that's total revenue by working as a clerk now let's do the same to find out the total revenue by working as a tutor so as a tutor what do we have we have individual demand so we have quantity demanded of one individual and we have three such students will make up the total market of tutoring okay so what is the individual quantity demanded the individual quantity demanded is equal to 10 minus p 10 minus p we have it we have it from here uh, we have it as p equals to 10 minus q if we change the places of quantity and price we would have that quantity is equal to 10 minus p so we're using the quantity function right now 10 minus p times 3 is equal to the total quantity of tutoring now what do we do next let's see here we have quantity of tutoring is equal to 30 minus 3p and now we would like to have a function of price based on the market demand so the price of the entire market let's switch places of price and quantity we would have that 3p is equal to 30 minus quantity of tutoring which means that the price of the market would be equal to 30 minus quantity of tutoring divided by 3 and that's equal to 30 divided by 3 which is 10 minus 1 over 3 quantity of tutoring so we found out the price of tutoring for the entire market now what do we have from tutoring we have income we have total revenues so let's write the total revenue function from tutoring total revenue from tutoring is the price that we are charging times the quantity that we are supplying the quantity that we are actually tutoring the price we just found out for the market to be 10 minus 1 over 3 q from here this is the price that we just found so we're gonna substitute it 10 minus 1 over 3 quantity of tutoring multiplied with quantity of tutoring and that's equal to 10 times quantity of tutoring minus 1 over 3 times quantity of tutoring to the power of 2 what do we have we have the total revenue from tutoring only but recall the question that we also have an option to set a two-part tariff here we have it two-part tariff what does that mean well that should ring a bell that we can also exploit the consumer surplus we can charge the consumer surplus so let's do that and let's do it graphically real quick to understand what what we're actually doing the price and quantity for the tutoring market the tutoring demand here and here and we are speaking now about the market price so 10 minus 1 over 3 times quantity of tutoring means we have an intercept of 10 over here a slope of 1 over 3 so it's going to be pretty flat and the maximum quantity is going to be 30 because that's going to make the price equals to 0 so that's going to be the demand so we will have a consumer surplus which will be the difference between the price that we are charging so we will charge a certain price for tutoring and a certain quantity for tutoring in the market 
this is the total quantity of tutoring in the market this is the price of tutoring in the market this will be our consumer surplus that we can charge so we will still have total revenue from the consumer surplus of tutoring and the consumer surplus of tutoring is the area of a triangle which is 1 over 2 times the height which is 10 minus the price of tutoring multiplied with the width which is the quantity of tutoring now what is consumer surplus if we expand it well we already know the price of tutoring we already know the price of tutoring from here so we're gonna substitute it it's 1 over 2 times 10 minus let's substitute the price function which is 10 minus 1 over 3 quantity of tutoring of the entire market multiplied with quantity of tutoring for the entire market and I keep saying for the entire market because that's gonna be for all three students together and then we will see all that quantity divided by three students how much tutoring each student gets that's the reason we make this distinction between individual market and total demand or the, the entire market so individual demand and market demand so we got 1 over 2 times 10 minus 10 is 0 minus minus 1 over 3 becomes positive uh, sorry 1 over 3 positive 1 over 3 uh, quantity of tutoring times quantity of tutoring that's quantity of tutoring to the power of 2 so 1 over 2 times 1 over 3 that's just 1 over 6 times quantity of tutoring to the power 2 that's another source of income the consumer surplus from tutoring so let me try and zoom out to see if we have the biggest picture because from all this we can now find out our total revenue from all three sources clerk tutoring and the consumer surplus of tutoring so let's do it like that here we have now the total revenue that we can actually achieve and that's going to be 72 minus 6 times quantity of tutoring plus over here we have where was it uh, total revenue of tutoring this one 10 quantity of tutoring minus 1 over 3 quantity of tutoring squared let me go to the right so that we can keep the picture okay running out of space but anyway we're gonna fit so plus the consumer surplus which is 1 over 6 times quantity of tutoring square 1 over 6 times quantity of tutoring square what do we have we have a function in terms of one variable that's what we were looking for now let's maximize our function our total revenue with respect to quantity of tutoring to see how much quantity of tutoring we optimally will do so when we differentiate we will have a slope on the peak of a graph equal to zero which means if we differentiate this with respect to quantity of tutoring what do we have 72 derivative is zero minus six times qt derivative it's minus six plus 10 times qt derivative is just 10 minus 1 over 3 times qt squared derivative that's 1 over 3 as a constant times 2 qt power rule plus 1 over 6 times qt squared derivative again power rule that's 2 times qt equals to 0 let's do some math here because we can cancel out something 1 over 6 times 2 that's just 1 over 3 and now we have minus 6 plus 10 that's just 4 plus sorry minus 4 minus 1 over 3 times 2 that's just a second uh, small small error no problem yes 4 minus 2 over 3 quantity of tutoring plus 1 over 3 quantity of tutoring equals to 0 let me go a bit down so we got now minus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3 that's minus 1 over 3 so 4 minus 1 over 3 quantity of tutoring equals to 0 which means that 4 equals to 1 over 3 times quantity of tutoring so the quantity of tutoring is equal to only 12 quantity of tutoring is equal to 12 that's in the optimal solution now if quantity of tutoring is equal to 12 let's find out the quantity of being a clerk since we know that quantity of being a clerk plus quantity of being a tutor which optimally is 12 must equal to 12 what we can see we have no room for quantity of clerk we have no room for working as a clerk so we work nothing as a clerk we only tutor so we decided that we only tutor now the question is how much are we charging well let's see recall that 12 hours of tutoring is for the entire market 
We have three students in the market, so we divide by three and we find out that we tutor four hours per student. What price are we charging? Well, we know the individual demand, which is price equal 10 minus quantity of the individual student. And that's 10 minus 4, because 4 is the quantity demanded for individual student. And that's equal to 6. We charge $6 for our tutoring. So we charge $6 per hour. Now, if we draw it on a graph to see what the consumer surplus is, and we draw now the individual demand, which is 10 minus Q. So we have 10 here, a slope of negative 1. This is going to be our demand and we have the price equals to 6. So the price equals to 6 would be over here. We demand, the students demand 4 units each. And the consumer surplus is this area over here. So if we calculate the area of this small triangle, what is that? Consumer surplus is 1 over 2 times the height, 10 minus 6 is 4, and the width, which is also 4. So 4 times 4 is 16, divided by 2 is 8. The consumer surplus is 8. So how much do we charge overall? Well, let's see. In total, from tutoring, how much money do we make? We make the following. We make, let's do it here like that, running out of space, um, $6. And we, we, we tutor 4 hours and we tutor 3 students. So 6 times 4 times 3 plus... $8 per student as a fixed fee, as a consumer surplus fee. We're charging that additional amount because they're willing to pay it for three students. So what do we have? 6 times 12, that's 72. 8 times 3, that's 24. So in total, we're making $96 by working as a tutor only. Now, if we would work only as a clerk, suppose we would have worked as a clerk 12 hours, we would have made 6 times 12 and that would have equaled $72 as a clerk. So clearly this option by focusing on tutoring and also charging the consumer surplus is a better option. We just proved it with math, with differentiating and we are done.